the language of deceit notes and extracts the challenge of change there are in essence essentially only two ways to change the world through words or with the sword by persuasive reasoning also known as manipulation or by persuasive force also known as threats within these the poles of love and fear are ever present if not always visible it is no coincidence that the words and the sword have almost identical spelling there are few accidents in language yet we seldom think of them in the same breath anyway history is abound with examples of peacemakers using erudite diplomacy only to find warmongers hellbent on domination and destruction sitting at the other side of the elongated table remember that only a round table presents any semblance of equality how much has been lost by the brazen treatment of the truth as an unnecessary consequence for our reality as such the average person has through the ages been well under equipped to deal with the trials of learning a language and applying it with real purpose the great conundrum of any skill is that once you have mastered it what should you do with it next the early greek philosophers and lawmakers argued whether or not the public should be taught a language at all so powerful were words to manipulate reality and our perceptions of the known universe that they were considered extremely dangerous words were leveraged to assist with the rise and fall of civilizations down throughout time therein was also the knowledge conundrum that each system however beneficial at first over time decays through the influence of the self-destructive human psyche also known as the ego or dark side a mindset that instructs us on the value of communalization of everything should always be avoided all must be shared and all must be equal yet utopia is of course a lie the words gave us visions which give us hope pleasure solace and fleetingly an occasional glimmer of understanding before the abandonment of philosophies of enlightenment and the inevitable conclusion of everything words essentially are just sounds to which we hopefully attach a common core meaning but in addition words also have a root that gives us an origin a point of reference or a concept to expand on all languages however complex have a similar structure and purpose or function they are building blocks for thought and creativity curiosity and invention mindfulness and mindlessness and as we live so often 
the words do the same. They breathe life into the world, almost like gods. And like each person, they have a source somewhere, a magical birth, a painful growth, and an unavoidable death. They are a part of society's fabric and construct. The root of government is govern, which we also notice contains the word over, meant rather interestingly, refers to the mind. Also, think for a moment about the words we use on a daily basis. Port unity or employment or entertainment. What can you glean from their construction or inflection? Is not business just to be busy? To think that a word truly defines an object or a person is a fundamental mistake. Consider for a moment an empty plastic bottle sitting on a square glass table on the third floor of a tall building in the center of an overcrowded city. This, however useful description, avoids the chemistry, the physics, the origin, and the intention. The natural cause and unnatural effects of organization are at play throughout the world surrounding us. A word relates to its definition as the thought relates to the origin and the physical body to the physical space. The development of an understanding of the mechanics of the human mind has been an intellectual pursuit for thousands of years. Although every age may begin to question whether it has ever occurred at all. We are imperfect in our search for perfection. In a great attempt to leap forward through the 20th century, a wide variety of elite or advanced compartmentalized schools were established to further the development of the study of skills that encompassed all of human capabilities. Such institutions foundationally included reading and writing and mathematics and later the modern sciences. All a bastardization and corruption of the original trivium and quadrivium. Not only was one of the purported aims linguistic understanding, but hopefully also the art of debate or compromise were relevant to avoid destructive conflicts. So what has been the result of this great endeavor? Have we attained the success and progress that was the true desire of the founders of society? Or have we failed developmentally? Have we given away that which we should have held more closely? There is in many environs of society a war on for our minds and our thoughts, as much as for our beliefs and our soul. Maybe there always has been. Sadly, and rather obviously, and wholly predictably, we forget that nobody wins a war. Any battlefield littered with dead bodies, or unconscious or even semi-conscious beings, 
is no great victory at all. Blood spilled never returns to the body. For sure, there are things that we need to defend. But some of the basic lessons of the ages we still have yet to learn in any real sense. You know, you can't truly fight fire with fire. You need water for that. At least you do if your aim is balanced and comprehensive. The language of deceit. Notes and extracts.